I want to continue this conversation around using Notion, Roam, Obsidian, or whatever app it is for knowledge management. Now, August Bradley has just done a video about Obsidian and Notion, specifically in knowledge management, and I want to do a response video for my thoughts in this conversation. For context on this specific instruction, August was talking about a life operating system, his PPV life operating system, and integrating all of those aspects together with knowledge management. So I will try and do the same thing with Obsidian, but obviously Obsidian isn't the same as Notion, so there will be some nuances in there, which is part of the discussion. So August talks about the emergence of knowledge in different contextual dashboards, different places, whether that's tasks, projects, goals, reviews, all of those sorts of things. And inside of Notion, they're done typically with linked databases, relations, roll-ups, uh, and then you've got the filters and sorts and all of the different database viewing features that's available in Notion. And the emergence, so August said, the emergence is easier in Notion. Now, I wouldn't say it's easier, it's certainly a different way of doing it because essentially all it is is a link. It's a relation with a filtered view. Now, because of the way Obsidian works with links, the filtered view isn't really filtered for, you can filter it for tags, you can filter it for whatever you need, but most of the time you only link what you need to link. So it's just a link and in the backlink panel, whether that's an outgoing link or an incoming link, i.e. a backlink. So I wouldn't say the emergence is any easier in Notion or any more difficult in Obsidian. It's just a different way of doing doing it with different viewing capabilities because of the board list table views that you have in Notion. There was a point made about it being more manual work in Obsidian, but I think if the setup is done appropriately, there isn't any more manual work. And in fact, it can actually be less cumbersome inside of Obsidian because when you create a piece of knowledge, a piece of content, a, a capture note, whatever it is, you can use a template automatically creating that connection with the page, which I do in my system because the date is automatically added. So when I do my review, I don't have to go and find the page. I don't have to go filter the page because I know it's already going to be backlinked. It's already going to be related. Now in notion you'd either need to manually make the, the relation or you'd need to self-reference the relation, do a self-reference filter or an auto filter, or you'd have to use a filter setup to drag and drop the information over, which I would argue is a little bit more of a manual process because you need to add that thing. Whereas inside of Obsidian, you don't need to because when you make the new page, it automatically adds in the template, which automatically creates the backlink, which is going to show in the backlink panel anyway. The resurfacing information in context, I think, depends on the context that you're resurfacing in. And for this specific conversation, we're talking about knowledge. Now, if it's knowledge specifically, I, ideally you'd have an article, an essay, or some purposeful reason to be collecting knowledge, whether that's around a general area of interest or a topic of interest a little bit more specific. And when you're resurfacing information, all you really need to do is create a backlink, the same as you would inside of Notion. Now, for me, the way I work in Obsidian is I process my notes. So once I've made a capture note, I've, I've got the thing. I want to make sure I'm doing something with it straight away. So before it goes into my system, into my database of hidden things, hidden things, uh, I actually put it, I put it into multiple different places where I think it may be appropriate. And to do that is just a copy paste over because of the panels that are there. Now inside of Notion, yes, you have the linked databases and yes, you can just dump them in. But when you, when you go into that page to see it, you either need to have written a summary of whatever the note is so you know what, what you're going back to, what you've actually found, or you need to go into the note through the database. Now, if you've got 10, 15, 20 different notes, you're going in and out all of those pages to try and remind yourself what's going on. We're talking like in future now. You're trying to remind yourself, okay, what, why did I take this note? How is this note related? Is this in the entire note that's related? Because sometimes when you've watched a video or something, you may have four or five different points from the video, but only one of those points is actually related to the topic you want to write about. Now, in Notion, you'd either need to make a new page for that specific point, or you'd need to make the relation to the page, to the note, and then when you go and resurface that note, you need to find the point that you originally wanted, or that needs to be explicitly said somewhere, whether that is in a, a text property next to the page or something like that. Whereas in Obsidian, because everything is block-based, not page-based, uh, you can make that link to the block rather than to the page. Now, I'm not talking about block referencing. Yes, that is a feature Obsidian and Rome have that Notion doesn't have. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about copy and pasting it over. And you can do that in Notion, but the way that most people use Notion is not block by block basis or copy and pasting things over because it's not as easy because you can only see one page. Whereas in Obsidian, I'm working, I have the point, I move the point over to the page, I move the point over to a different page. I can have the point in multiple different pages with backlinks. So all of the re relations, the backlinks are there, they're made, but the point is in the page 
without me having to go find it to to go into the page through the link database or anything like that. So that is a, a little bit of a, a different perspective on that side of the conversation. This point may actually go against August in a negative way for Obsidian, but August was saying that Obsidian is great for creating sort of serendipity. I can't say it. Unrelated ideas. Um, <laughs> creating different ideas around a topic or thought or whatever it is and inside of Obsidian unlinked references are certainly a thing and yes I use them but I don't use them to create these really abstract ideas, abstract thoughts, abstract connections because most of the connections are already made so those connections that I'm making are actually going through the local graph view when I'm working in a note. It's not the unlinked references or this all over the place thinking that actually creates, the, it's not the features or the functions that creates this this out there, this creative thought, it's the graph view, which he actually speaks about and says it's too cluttered. And I think the global, the, the entire graph view, yes, that is way too cluttered to be using. But the local graph view, if used appropriately, however you decide to use it, can be very useful. And this is where the links, I think, are made. Now in Notion, visualizing links between pages is very, very difficult. And August does go to explain that the, because of the way the tools are developed, it's very difficult for that view to be a thing inside of Notion and tools that are similar. Whereas in Obsidian, you can have a graph view and the graph view allows for links and you can group and color that graph view. And I will probably share, share my screen, but in a graph view, in a page, I can see what are references, what are pages that I have explored, what are pages that I haven't explored, and I can group it in any way I want. I would personally do it in status so that when I go into the page, I can then see all of the other related comments, related topics. And where I typically find all of these serendipitous, said it, serendipitous connections, is when I hover over and have a page preview and my page preview goes to all the links and I think, oh, there's a link in that page and I'm talking about this and this page. I could create that link. I can actually make that link and all I need to do is to drag and drop it over. Uh, and that is where those serendipitous connections are made. And inside of Notion, it wouldn't be as easy because I can't open two, three, four pages at once. I can't drag and drop the page. Well, I may be able to drag and drop the page over, um, but certainly not in the preview view preview view. So I think both tools can do it, but it's just a different workflow to do it. Um, but Obsidian, I think because of the local graph view gives you a better overview view, uh, which actually goes on to his point about the, the graph view being too complicated and not expandable. I would disagree because the local graph view is useful uh, as long as you're not making thousands of connections. But that I think is just common sense when it comes to knowledge management. I know some people will disagree with that common sense, but going on a point that August was saying about the scaling issues, well, essentially in PPV, if you have 50 50 different pages that are connected to one idea, you're going to have a long list of 50 pages. And the same thing would happen inside of Obsidian. If you've got 50 different backlinks, you're still going to have that list of 50 backlinks. Obsidian and Obsidian will still have the same. You've got 50 things. You can filter it in Notion. You could filter it inside of Obsidian. You could search for it in Obsidian. You could search for certain words in Obsidian. And you could do in Notion, but it's slower in Notion. You could go through the pages in Obsidian. You could go through the pages in Notion. Going through Obsidian will be quicker because you can see them all at once. You can just go down the page preview and then scroll up and down. Notion you'd have to go in and out of the pages. So you'd still be able to do both, but they still have the same issue of if you've got 50 pages linked, you've still got 50 pages linked. <laughs> it doesn't matter what system you're using, they're still linked. Uh, so that would be sort of like a, a rebuttal. August says it can be useful for one specific research project, and it certainly can be, but I think it actually becomes more powerful when you have multiple research projects together. And the reason I say this is, so for example, I'm currently working uh, on lots of different knowledge management things, and I did a, an article on the relative age effect. And for those that are unfamiliar, go look at the Wikipedia article, that's where I, I published published uh, the work on that. And then I did an article on the testing effect, which is active recall, retrieval practice, and I did both of those inside of Obsidian. And so some of the different points were actually related and because I put them both into Obsidian I can then relate the ideas together and actually create a new thought going back to all the ideas that we had previously but inside of Notion it would have been much harder for me to link those things because they are quite separate they are still learning related but they're still quite separate topics but because they were both in my side panel of uh, what, what would you call it uh, starred notes because they're in my starred notes panel I could see both of them uh, and because some of the points were linked so there was sort of like second degree connections I think it's I can't remember what the link is, but it's, it's a second degree connection because I was going to preview. I could see the relative age effect right there in the testing effect, one of the pages. And I was like, oh, 
I could connect those together because of this, that, and the other. So having multiple research projects in the Obsidian application, I find is actually more useful. August then does use some arbitrary numbers about comparing Obsidian, Rome, and Notion with percentages of what the, the apps and the tools can do. Now I can't speak much on Rome because I don't use it because as August said, it's expensive and I don't want to use it. And Obsidian, in my opinion, is better and it has so many community plugins that expand the tool in lots of different ways. Now, when it comes to comparing the different tools, yes, Notion has more fundamental features because of the database. There are database views and there are lots of small things you can do with those database views, which obviously add to that feature stack. But, and Obsidian doesn't have database views, so you can't say, oh, you can filter, you can sort, you have advanced filters, you have grouping filters, because Obsidian just doesn't have databases, but it doesn't need databases because of the backlinks that it has. Uh, so I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's a, a, a fair comparison, because databases basically goes, here's tons and tons of features, and using plugins, you can actually do the majority of what Notion does just with the Obsidian plugins, and this is where you'd need to explore the plugins, and in the same way in Notion, you'd need to explore all the, the blocks and the, the different features you can do, so it's still a learning curve for both tools. Percentage, I'm not going to put an arbitrary percentage on it because I, I really don't know when it comes to the actual feature sets. I think they're about the same because both videos that I have done on Notion and Obsidian took just as long to make when it comes to absolute features that are there. And I would probably say, if anything, Obsidian has more features because there are like, what, thousands? I think there's like a thousand plugins and all of those plugins have additional features because of hotkeys and shortcuts and things like that. So if you're going to go on quantity of features, Obsidian probably takes it with the amount of community plugins and CSS and code and JavaScript and the rest that you can do with it and adjust with it. But when it comes to out of the box features, maybe Notion has more quantity. When you go to quality of features, again, it depends what you're going to be using it for. Uh, so I think the arbitrary number was an interesting one, but I think slightly biased towards Notion uh, just from a, an Obsidian user perspective. And then the last point August made about Zettelkasten, I, I completely agree with almost everything that he said. I say almost because there was a little bit in there where I was like, mm, not completely sure about that because there are uses to Zettelkasten. There are uses to going through and organizing notes if you are actively in your notes. And that, that's the caveat I would add there, which is what August also said, is that if you're organizing notes for the sake of organizing them, it's pointless. But if you're organizing notes to help you with a project later on, which you expect to be doing, so for example, some of the notes that I'm going through, I'm reorganizing my notes in a, in a sense. I'm, I'm essentially adding a template to the notes. Now, I'm not using the notes there and then, but because I'm recontextualizing the notes a little bit, I'm organizing some of the notes, not all of them, but some of the notes because I know they're likely to be used in the coming months in early 2022. So I'm I'm organizing them for the sake of organizing them because I know I'm going to use them in the future. Whereas I'm not organizing other notes because I have no idea when I intend on using them. So I think it's certainly contextual about what you're doing with your notes and how frequently you're going to be in your notes for knowledge. Now, of course, there are going to be lots of other arguments and disputes about different points of view in this conversation. So I urge you to carry on the conversation in the comment section below.